Her spirit saw the world as living God. It saw the one and knew that all was he. She knew him as the absolute's self-space. One with her self and ground of all things here in which the world wanders seeking for the truth, guarded behind its face of ignorance. She followed him through the march of endless time. All nature's happenings were events in her. The heartbeats of the cosmos were her own. All beings thought and felt and moved in her. She inhabited the vastness of the world. Its distances were her nature's boundaries. Its closenesses, her own life's intimacies. Her mind became familiar with its mind. Its body was her body's larger frame in which she lived and knew herself in it one multitudinous in its multitudes. She was a single being, yet all things. The world was her spirit's wide circumference. The thoughts of others were her intimates, their feelings close to her universal heart, their bodies, her many bodies, kin to her. She was no more herself, but all the world. Out of the infinitudes all came to her into the infinitudes sentient she spread infinity was her own natural home nowhere she dwelt her spirit was everywhere the distant constellations wheeled round her Earth saw her born, all worlds were her colonies. The greater worlds of life and mind were hers. All nature reproduced her in its lines. Its movements were large copies of her own. She was the single self of all these selves. She was in them and they were all in her. This first was an immense identity in which her own identity was lost. What seemed herself was an image of the whole. She was a subconscious life of tree and flower, the outbreak of the honeyed buds of spring. She burned in the passion 
and splendor of the rose. She was the red heart of the passion flower, the dream white of the lotus in its pool. Out of subconscious life, she climbed to mind. She was thought and the passion of the world's heart. She was the Godhead hid in the heart of man. She was the climbing of his soul to God. The cosmos flowered in her. She was its bed. She was time and the dreams of God in time. She was space and the wideness of his days. From this she rose where time and space were not. The superconscient was her native air. Infinity was her movement's natural space. Eternity looked out from her on time. This afternoon I was looking at a late poem of Schrobindo's. It's called Ascent. And it has two parts to it. The first part is called Into the Silence and the second part is called Beyond the Silence. So the last few weeks we've been reading about Savitri's discovery of and entry into and experience of the silence. Now, as we come to the last part of this, uh, this last canto, we, uh, we see her experiencing what lies beyond the silence, all the, the dynamism from which the manifestation, the universe, has been born. And she has this identification with, with the cosmic spirit and the cosmic consciousness. That is the, the title of this canto. We can start on this side, Editor. Would you read the first two lines? Her spirit saw the world as living God. It saw the one and knew that all was He. Yes. Before she had been experiencing the one, the one reality as something unknowable, unreachable. But now she experiences that one in another way, way as a living God, an individual form, not an impersonal, uh, empty, ungraspable reality. Her spirit sees the one and experiences that everything, all the appearances forms, movements of the, of the manifestation. They are all He. Suresh. Hmm? She knew Him as the absolute self space, one with herself and ground of all things uh, here. here, in which the world wanted 
seeking for the truth. Water behind its face of ignorance. She followed him through the much of endless time. Yes. So knowing the one, knowing him as first as living God and then as everything in the universe, she also knows him as the absolute, the transcendent. He is, as it were, the space which is that absolute. And she feels his identity with her self and as the ground, the basis of everything here in this world, the ground, the space in which the world wanders seeking for the truth, the truth that is hidden, guarded, protected between this ignorance which is the present face of the world. Behind this ignorance which sees everything as separate, sometimes as meaningless, there's that truth, that one. And she's able, because she can see all these different aspects of the one, she can see him also moving through time in the course of evolution, the development of all the different appearances and manifestations of himself. Bebel. All nature's happenings were events in her, the heartbeats of the cosmos were her own. All beings saw and felt and moved in her. She inhabited the vastness of the world. Its distances were her nature's boundaries. Its closenesses her own lives and diseases. Yes. So she identifies with this all, which is the expression of the, of the one. So she becomes that one and everything that happens in nature is happening in her. It's as if the, the universe has a great heart which is always beating and that is the beating of her own heart. All beings in all the worlds thought and felt and moved in her. So she lives in the vastness of this material world. What seems far away, its distances were like the, the boundaries, the frontiers of her own individual nature and its closenesses, what seem to be near, these were the things that were very intimate and close to her own life. So she's living uh, intimately within and also vastly in the universe as a whole. Chandra. Her mind became familiar with its mind. Its body was her body's larger frame, in which she lived and knew herself in it. Once multitudes, multitudinous, multitudinous hmm. in its multitude. Yes, thank you. So, it's this is the world, no? Her mind became familiar with the mind that is thinking 
in the world, the body of the world was like a larger frame, a larger expression of her own body and she lives in all that and knew herself in it. She feels one with all that but at the same time she's identified with all the many, 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 many beings and forms and movements in it. Mm. Multitudinous means many, many fold. Mm. Alice. Yes, thank you. So she doesn't feel divided up into many different parts. No? She's a single being and yet that single being is containing within it all things. And this world, this material world, was her spirit's wide circumference. Do you know this word, Suresh, circumference? No? But if we have a circle in mathematics, the line which is the limit of the circle, that's its circumference, that's what defines the circle. So her spirit is as wide as the whole world. The world is the circumference, the, the border of her spirit. And because of this wide identification, she can uh, receive the thoughts of other people. The thoughts of others were her intimates. She felt their feelings close to her heart as if they are her own feelings. Their bodies are as if she has many other bodies. She can experience herself in all of them, kin to her, closely connected with her. So she's no longer this uh, limited savitri that she was before. She was no more herself. She's become the whole world. Ganga Lakshmi. Out of the infinitude all came to me. Into the infinitude's sentient she spread. Infinity was her own natural thing. Yes. This word infinitude is an unusual word. I'm not sure. I think that Shrobindo might have uh, coined it himself. We have certainty where we feel sure of something and then there are certitudes, things that we are sure of. So infinitude, it, it is a, a noun from the word infinity. So as if there are many, many, many in things that are infinite. <coughs> Out of the infinitudes, all the vastnesses, Everything came to her. She could be in contact with everything. And she can spread her own being into the infinitudes. Sentient. It means with sense impressions. Subtle senses. Infinity was her own natural home. She feels absolutely at home, freely moving in all these many infinitudes. Shilpa. 
Nowhere she dwelt, her spirit was everywhere. The distant constellations wheeled around her, wheeled round her. Earth saw her gone, all worlds were her colleagues. The greater worlds of life and mind were hers. All nature reproduced her in its lines. Its movements were large copies of her own. Yes. So she's not tied down to stay and live anywhere and all that. She doesn't dwell anywhere, nowhere. Her spirit is everywhere. It's filling all this infinity. And she feels as if the distant constellations wheeled round her. Constellations are groups of stars what we see as groups of stars. Actually, there may be huge distances between those stars, but we see them uh, together in a kind of group from our world. So all those distant constellations, some of them, some of those things that we see as single dots of light may be galaxies. It's as if she's a kind of center of the whole universe they are all moving around her. She's been born on earth. Earth saw her born. But all the other worlds are her colonies. Of course, the earth is the symbol of the material plane. But there are other planes of life and mind of subtle physical, of higher levels of consciousness. So all those other worlds were her colonies, places that she has left, moved out from earth and conquered, become part of those other worlds. And he mentions particularly the greater worlds of life and mind were hers. She feels familiar and at home there. And the whole of universal nature is as if reproducing her, making new copies or pictures of her. The movements of nature, all the many movements, there are tiny little movements and there are vast movements, but those movements of nature were large copies of her own individual movements. Ellen. She was the single cell of all the cells. She was in them and they were all in her. So she's become that one, not that one self. She's had a complete identification with that one, that living cosmic spirit who is the ground inhabiting and giving birth to all these forms, all these selves. She, was, she feels herself in them and she feels them all in her. Venkat. This first person women's identity in which her own identity was lost. What seemed herself was an image of the whole. Yes. So that's a kind of summing up of what we have read no, from from line hundred ninety-four up to um, line 220, it gets summed up in these three lines. This first, this experience was an immense identity, a huge identification, oneness, in which her small little identity, her restricted identity gets lost. Hmm? What? seems like herself is an image 
of the whole of everything. And then Shobindo uh, describes several aspects, perhaps successive aspects, which Savitri experienced um, of this identity. Would you like to read? She was. Continue. Uh, she bargained in the fashion and splendor of the rose. She was the red heart of the passion flower, the dream wife of the lotus in its school. So this is her identification with, with the world of life, which expresses itself in flowers, no? the subconscious life of tree and flower. There's a kind of consciousness there. Plants uh, have a kind of consciousness, but it doesn't express itself in awareness. It expresses itself in reactions, in movement, in growth. So she f feels herself as that subconscious life of tree and flower. She's identified with this bursting out of the buds in spring. The trees may have been completely bare, but in, when the warmth of spring comes out of the tree, the life expresses itself in what are going to be leaves and then twigs and flowers. And there are certain flowers that seem to express a great intensity of life the delight of life. One of these is the rose, the flower which represents life, beauty. Mm -hmm. So she is burning she, with this intensity in the passion and the splendor of the rose. She was the red heart of the passion flower. The passion flower is a very strange, complex flower, no? And um, there, there are different varieties. Uh, the common one which the mother has given the name silence to, it has a deep purple center. Mm -hmm. And then, as if in contrast to that the red heart of the passion flower, she also is the dream white of the lotus in its pool, the coolness and peace and perfection of the lotus. We have one of mother's uh, meditations from the time when she was in Japan, where she describes how she had an experience of identification with the life in the cherry tree at the time when the cherry trees blossom it's a great festival in Japan, no? and the identification with all those numerous blooms. Very beautiful. We can look at that sometime. Then, Joel, you would read the next stage. Out of subconscious life, she climbed to mind. She was thought and the passion of the world's heart. She was the Godhead deep in the heart of man. She was the climbing of his soul to God. Hmm. So out of that subconscious life of the plants, the animals, she ascends into the conscious life of the, the universal mind. Then that gets expressed through the thought and the passion of the world, the heart of the world. And deep in the heart is the individual Godhead, the individual divine being. So hidden in the heart of human beings, there's this uh, God in the making. 
So she's identified with that, with the soul life and with the uh, upward movement of the soul towards the divine. Lela. The cosmos flowered in her. She was its bed. She was time and the dreams of God in time. She was space and the wildness of his days. Wonderful poetic way of expressing her oneness with the whole universe, with the cosmos. It's like a, a flower that is emerging and she's the bed, the flower bed, where that flower is growing, from which it is emerging. She's identified with time and with all the, the dreams of God in time all the happenings and events and movements that have happened, that are happening, that will happen in the great river and flow of time. Time goes with space. These are two aspects of the divine manifestation. She was space and the wideness of his days, God's days. Uh, Sri Aurobindo describes in the Life Divine how the Brahman, that indescribable unknown quantity who gives rise to all this, um, extends himself. He has all potentiality contained in him. But for the manifestation, he extends himself as time, as space, and in the multitude of beings and events and forms which he projects out of himself. So she's identified with all that. You like to read? Superconsciousness was her native act, infinite was her woman's natural space. Infinity looked out from her on fire. Yes. So he said this was a first identity, you remember? Some lines back, line 221. And then there was the identification with the, the subconscious life and with the conscious life, the soul life with time and space. Now, at the close of the canto, she goes beyond all that to the transcendent state where there's no time, no space, where everything that we are conscious of in the manifestation is beyond that. The superconscient was her native air. She could breathe it and feel completely at home there. Infinity, the limitless, was the natural space of her movement of consciousness, of life. And it's as if when she looks out on, what was it, the march of God in time, eternity is looking through her eyes and seeing everything happening in time and space in the manifestation. Yes. One question. Earth, solar, born, all around, were colony. About 20 years ago, I had a long dream. I go to Venus. <laughs> well, in a way, Venus, uh, Venus is still in the material universe, yeah. so we can say that, um, but we take Venus as a symbolic world. Mm -hmm. It seems maybe all the planets in our solar system is a, are symbols 
of a subtle world. I, actually, if we go to Venus, we can't be there in our physical bodies because it's so unbelievably hot, no? But we don't think of it like that. We think of it as the green uh, world of life. So, but I think what he means here is that Earth represents the material universe. And then there are all the other subtle worlds, the worlds of um, the subtle physical world, the life, mind. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, in our material minds, we think, oh yes, we will like to colonize the moon, we like to colonize uh, Mars, no, one day. I, I think he means it in a subtler sense, yeah. that she, in her spirit, she can move everywhere not only in this material universe, but in the other worlds also. So this is the culminating movement of this part of Savitri's yoga. We have time, we can read this whole passage together, and then maybe I'll speak a little bit about what is coming next. Her spirit saw the world as living God. It saw the one and knew that all was he. She knew him as the absolute self-space, one with herself and ground of all things here in which the world wanders, seeking for the truth, guarded behind its face of ignorance. She followed him through the march of endless time. All nature's happenings were events in her. The heartbeats of the cosmos were her own. All beings thought and felt and moved in her. She inhabited the vastness of the world. Its distances were her nature's boundaries. Its closenesses, her own life's intimacies. Her mind became familiar with its mind. Its body was her body's larger frame in which she lived and knew herself in it, one, multitudinous in its multitudes. She was a single being Yet all things, the world was her spirit's wide circumference. The thoughts of others were her intimates, their feelings close to her universal heart. Their bodies, her many bodies, kin to her. She was no more herself, but all the world. Out of the infinitudes, all came to her. Into the infinitudes, sentient she spread. Infinity was her own natural home. Nowhere she dwelt, her spirit was everywhere. The distant constellations wheeled round her. Earth saw her born, all worlds were her colonies. 
the greater worlds of life and mind were hers. All nature reproduced her in its lines. Its movements were large copies of her own. She was the single self of all these selves. She was in them and they were all in her. This first was an immense identity in which her own identity was lost. What seemed herself was an image of the whole. She was a subconscient life of tree and flower, the outbreak of the honeyed buds of spring. She burned in the passion and splendor of the rose. She was the red heart of the passion flower, the dream white of the lotus in its pool. Out of subconscient life she climbed to mind. She was thought and the passion of the world's heart. She was the Godhead hid in the heart of man. She was the climbing of his soul to God. The cosmos flowered in her. She was its bed. She was time and the dreams of God in time. She was space and the wideness of his days. From this she rose where time and space were not. The superconscient was her native air. Infinity was her movement's natural space. Eternity looked out from her on time.